Another way to find the forces in the members of our truss is to use the method of sections. And this is going to be useful when there are forces in specific members that we're looking for, and maybe not necessarily the forces in every member that makes up the truss. The method of joints will always work to find what we're looking for, even if it's only specific members uh, whose forces we need to know. But the method of sections can make the solution process a lot faster, avoiding unnecessary free body diagrams and unnecessary extra equations to solve. And we might want to use method of sections and method of joints together in order to most efficiently solve a problem. So the first thing we want to look at uh, as with method of joints, before we do anything to find the forces in the individual members, is we want to see, is our truss structure statically determinant or statically indeterminant? Because that will determine the first step we want to take. So as with using method of joints, if we have a statically determinant truss, the first thing we want to do is make that external picture and solve for all of our support reactions. This external picture is going to be a rigid body, so we're going to get three equations out of it, and we're going to be able to solve for the three or fewer unknowns due to those supports. Once we know what's happening externally, now we can start to solve for the forces in members of the truss itself. So what's different now is instead of selecting a pin and seeing what forces are connected to it, we are going to make what we call a sectioned free body diagram. And what this is going to be is making a cut through members of the truss, and then we are going to keep everything to one side of that cut or the other side of that cut. And all the members that we cut through, we are going to be able to see that internal force that was contained inside the member that's now visible once we section off part of the truss. As a general rule, when we make this cut, we want to cut through at most three members to make our section free body diagram. And this is because each member we cut through, we're now going to see the internal force, which is going to be an unknown that we need to find. In our section free body diagram, generally it's going to be a rigid body free body diagram, and that means we can get three equilibrium equations out of it. So if we limit cutting through only three members, we're going to guarantee that the equilibrium equations that we get from this picture are going to be solvable. If we cut more than three members uh, to make the section cut, it's not incorrect, and we can still get equations that are going to be true. It's still in equilibrium. Every section is going to be in equilibrium, but we know that the number of variables we create will be greater than the number of equations we're going to create. So we're going to definitely need more section cuts or maybe uh, more pins in order to solve for all of the unknowns that we are creating. So once we make that section cut, we find those unknowns. Hopefully some of them were unknowns that we were interested in finding. We might not be done. There might not have been one section cut we could make that would find the forces in all of the members that we were interested in. Or at least we couldn't make a cut that only went through three members and at the same time went through all the members we wanted. But what we can do is we can make more free body diagrams. We can either take another section cut that now cuts through a member we didn't solve for in the first cut, or we can actually go and do pin diagrams. We can do method of joints now that we have some more knowledge. But in the end, using at least one section cut can really reduce uh, how many equations and free body diagrams we need if we're interested in solving for the forces in specific members of our truss. If we want to know the forces in every member of the truss, probably we're better off just doing method of joints and going very methodically through all the joints, drawing all of the free body diagrams and solving for all of the unknowns. But method of sections is useful when there's just specific members we're interested in for some quick calculations if we want to just see the forces in those members. Now, the second scenario is going to be if we have a statically indeterminate structure. So as with method of joints, when we had a statically indeterminate structure, I recommended that we skip over the external free body diagram. We know that we're not going to get enough equations for all of the unknowns and jump right into solving for internal forces in the members of the truss. And the same is going to be true with method of sections. Right away, if we have a statically indeterminate structure, I will recommend that we make a section cut as our first move. And here, if we can make a section cut and take the part of the section that does not include any of those supports, 
that's going to make a good first free body diagram because we should be able to limit the total number of unknowns we have to three and avoid the supports which we didn't solve for in this case because we did not make that external free body diagram. Now, depending on the structure, it might not be possible to take a section cut that doesn't have support reactions, in which case we're probably going to have to go through more equations, more free body diagrams to solve for all of our unknowns. But there are going to be cases where we can make a section cut that does not include any of those support reactions. And thus, we might not ever have to solve for them if we're only interested in forces in specific members that make up the truss. As with a statically determinant structure, we can start with one section cut and then we are allowed to make new section cuts or go on and make some pin diagrams using method of joints. And we can work our way through the structure until we have found the forces in all of the members that we were interested in. So I'll reiterate, there is not one way to solve these truss problems. Method of joints will work if we make enough of these pin diagrams. Method of sections alone can work if we make enough sections, or a combination of the two might work. Now, if we're looking for efficiency, how can we solve what we're looking for in the fewest number of steps? That's where we just need to be strategic in what section cuts we make and what pin diagrams we make so that we can have all of our unknowns solved for with the fewest number of free body diagrams and equations.